Hello students and welcome to another version of Mr. Hargrove's math class where today we're going to talk about making inferences about populations. Please make sure that you have pencil and paper and that you're able to take notes on this lesson. The learning target and the success criteria read as such. In this lesson we will use data from a random sample to make inferences about a population. Students will know that they are successful when they can use proportion boxes and percent bars to make predictions about a population. So what is an inference? An inference is an idea or a conclusion drawn from evidence and reasoning. It's based on given facts or circumstances, and it may be referred to as a prediction. So we're gonna be doing some predicting today based off of information that we've been given. And let's start with this first example. If there were 420 students surveyed, predict how many students you would expect to prefer volleyball. So if I look at this bar graph, I'm seeing that it's showing that students were surveyed, it looks like on their favorite sport. And we have the results of the survey listed here. So if we go through, we can see that seven students said that they prefer tennis, eight students said that they prefer volleyball, four students said that they prefer baseball, and nine students said that they prefer football. Now, in order to make this prediction, I am going to use a proportion box to do that, and you learned about proportion boxes in uh, our earlier unit. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up my proportion box, and it's gonna look something like this. Split it three ways and then down the center like that. And on the top, what I'm gonna have, this is gonna be my volleyball. I'm just gonna make it VB to save room. So that's gonna be volleyball, and then this section is gonna be total. And the reason I'm doing volleyball is because the question asked specifically how many students would we expect to prefer volleyball? So I'm looking at the volleyball section. And if I just look at this data right here in the bar graph, I see that nine students chose, uh, I'm sorry, that's gonna be eight students. So that's a mistake there. Let me erase that. It's actually eight students said that they prefer volleyball. So I'll finish out this proportion box and I'll put in my eight. And then I need to figure out how many total students participated in the survey. Now this is when I'm just gonna add up nine plus four plus seven plus eight. And when you add all of these together, you get a total of 28. So 28 total students participated in the survey and it's gonna go right there. Now they're asking us to make a prediction. If 420 students were surveyed, how many of them would we expect to choose volleyball? So I'm gonna put 420 here at the bottom where the total is, X goes right here. And now I can simply cross multiply and solve for X. So I'm just gonna do my normal cross multiplication. 28 times x, that gives me 28x equals 420 times 8. So that's 28x equals 3360. I'm then gonna divide both sides by 28. And when I do that, leaves me with X equals 120 total students would prefer volleyball. That's our prediction. If they surveyed 420 students, 120 of those students would prefer volleyball as their favorite sport. Okay, let's move on to the next example. And now we're dealing with a, uh, a box plot, I'm sorry, a dot plot that's looking at library visits per week. It says if 270 students were to visit the library, predict how many students would visit 
four times per week. How many students would visit four times per week? They want us to make a prediction here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus my attention right here on that uh, area because that is the students that chose four times per week. And I see three dots there, so that means three students chose four times per week. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm actually going to use a proportion box for this problem also. When we make predictions, these proportion boxes are very useful. And what I'm looking at, I want to look at the number of students that visit four times. So that's what I'm putting here, four times. And then this is going to be total. So. I'm going to ask myself, well, how many students said they visit four times? Well, three, because I see three dots. One, two, three. And then I need to figure out how many total students participated in the survey. So now I need to count the total dots. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. So there's a total of eighteen. All right. Now, I need to figure out, it says if 270 students were surveyed, so I'm going to put 270 as my total, X there. And then I'm going to do the same thing, cross multiply, solve for X. That's going to give me 18X equals 270 times 3 where 18x equals 810. I'm then going to divide both sides by 18. And that's going to leave me with x equals 45. So that would be my prediction. If 270 students were to visit the library, we would predict about 45 would say they visit four times per week based on the information that they gave us in this problem. All right, let us clear this and move on to the next example. And here we're looking at a circle graph that is talking about favorite pizza toppings. So it says out of 306, out of 320 students, how many would you expect to like something other than mushroom, cheese, or pepperoni? So right now they want our attention focused on this other column. So if we see percents, hope, hopefully something in your mind tells you that you're going to use a percent bar because we're going to use a percent bar to solve this one. And I got my eye on the 15 percent. Remember, your percent stay on one side and then your standard number is going to go on the other side. So we're looking at a total of 320 students. And we're going to use the percent bar to make this prediction. So that's my proportion right there. 100 over 15 is equal to 320 over X. I am going to do my same thing of cross multiplying and solving for X. 100 times X is going to give me 100 X equals 320 times 15. So that is 100 X equals 4,800. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 100, which is the same thing as simply knocking off two zeros. So I would say X equals 48. That is my prediction. Out of 320 students, we would say 48 of them would like something other than mushroom cheese or pepperoni. All right, let's move to our final example. It has a, another circle graph, and it says the circle graph shows the results of a survey in which students were asked whether they have a television in their bedroom. Out of 150 students, predict how many students would not own a television in their bedroom, and that's critical would not. Anytime you have a solving a problem and it says not, make sure you bring attention to that word so that you don't accidentally solve the problem incorrectly. 
but it has percents in the problem. So you guessed it. We're going to use the percent bar. And this is going to be 100%. And since we're talking about students that do not own a TV, I am going to use this 54%. Okay. 54% do not own a TV. And the total number of students that we're looking at, it says out of 150. So I'm going to put 150 up here to match with 100% and X will go here. And we're going to follow our same cues. We're going to cross multiply, solve for X. So 100 times X is 100X. Set that equal to 150 times 54. So that is 100x equals 8,100. Divide both sides by 100. And again, that's the same thing as just knocking two zeros off. X equals 81. So we would say 81 students would not own a television in their bedroom out of 150 students based on the data that they've given us. All right, so that is all we're going to do for today. I greatly appreciate your attention and look forward to having you join us again at the next edition of Mr. Hargrove's math class.